YouTube, this is GS Man with Smart here today with another brand new video for gaming with GS. And today we're going to talk about the leather farm that got released with the release of Lake Doric as well as the uh, Living World Season 3 Episode 4 Head of the Snake and whether it solved the problem of leather being overpriced, whether it solved the problem of leather being more available in the economy, and whether you can actually make some gold out of this. So yes, the name of this video is titled Easy Gold Trick, mainly because you can make a fairly good amount of gold by doing this farm, but also you can get a fairly good amount of experience as well. This leather farm reminds me very much so of the labyrinth in Halloween, and it's basically like a mini labyrinth. Now in the labyrinth for Halloween, everything has a lot less health, obviously. You can kill things a lot quicker, and presumably you could get more experience over a course of time. However, this little area in Lake Doric also gives you a huge amount of experience, especially if you have boosters. I was able to complete a whole mastery track in under 30 minutes, and I didn't have any boosters on. So this is a great way to actually farm for experience if you're still behind in the Heart of Thorns section, in the Heart of Thorns mastery tracks. When uh, the Labyrinth comes for Halloween, you can grind your Corteria Mastery tracks for experience. But for this farm, for the Leather Farm, for the Centaurs on the northeast corner of Lake Doric, you want to go and farm these for the experience for the Heart of Thorns Mastery tracks. So it's a great way to make some experience if you need experience, but it's also a great way to make some gold. Now if you're unfamiliar with the route that you're supposed to take, it is in the Watchtower Cliffs. It is the top right corner of Lake Doric. And there's actually someone who made a very nice route on Reddit. I have a picture on screen right now. We'll also link to the Reddit thread in the description where you can take a look at that post and download the image for yourself. Now the goal of this route is basically to start in this dirt area and you make your way up the little valley or this little ramp here and you're basically going all the way up. Make sure you check the mountain area too. There's a way to get on top of these mountain areas, the green areas, the hills. Uh, you'll see in the video footage, I'm actually commanding one of these squads there. Quite frankly, I didn't know the route, so I had someone else. I was following another person that was ahead of me. And they, and they knew the route fairly well. We didn't get all the strong boxes, but we basically climbed these mountains. We basically went through the valley here, climbed all the way to the top. And then at the very top, we glided back down to the beginning and basically to read the entire thing. It's a very easy farm. The area is not too big. You just go up the hill, go up the mountains, and then once you hit the very top, you glide back down. Now, along the way, you're going to find several items. For one, you're going to get lots of heavy supply bags from the centaurs that you kill. And these heavy supply bags will most likely give you uh, silk scraps, they'll give you T6 materials. You have a rare chance of getting hardened other sections, but most of the time you're going to get uh, T5 materials, which include large claws, large fangs, large scales, all the large uh, prefixes to the crafting materials. So for the most part, you want to just sell these straight like they are, like you get them. Sell the heavy supply bags. And in about an hour, you might make like a gold out of the heavy supply bags. Now, the other item you're going to get are Bloodstone Warped Saddle Bags. And these are basically champions. So this is a great way to actually farm for some champ bags as well. But you won't really get any exotic gear. What you will get from these champ bags is some Bloodstone Dust and you will get some Bloodstone Warped Hides. Now, you can also get these Bloodstone Warped Hides from killing things and you'll also get them from picking up strong boxes. More specifically, Harathi strong boxes that are spawning uh, in several locations on the mountains and on the hills. And as you go up the mountain and as you farm for these centaurs, you'll see lots of Harathi strong boxes that have these warped hides in them as well. That's basically all you're doing, killing centaurs and getting these few items. Like I said, the supply bags you want to sell instantly or obviously sell them for uh, uh, a price where someone would buy them, then don't just sell them instantly, list them. But you want to sell them, you, wanna, you don't want to open them because you'll get more money just by selling them. The Bloodstone Warped Saddlebags, you obviously want to open them because you can't sell them, so open them. And when you get to the Bloodstone Warped Hides, these you want to salvage actually. Some people are saying that you may want to actually sell them just how they are. Uh, they do sell right now, as I'm making this video, for 4 silver and 43 copper. But if you salvage these, you tend to make more money. And the reason why is because hardened leather sections 
are a fairly semi-rare, semi-common drop. You tend to get a good amount of hardened leather sections, and these still sell for a ton of silver. So while you could be selling four or five Bloodstone Warped Hides, you may be able to get two or three hardened leather sections from these, and they'll make more money than you would sell for selling the Bloodstone Warped Hides. So salvage all of your hides, and you'll get a variety of different leathers. You'll get hardened leather section, raw hide leather section, thin leather section, coarse leather section, thick leather section, and rugged leather sections. And all of these sell for a fairly good amount. Unless you're unlucky and you get like raw hide or thick leather sections, then those don't sell for a lot. But all the other ones sell for a pretty good amount. And uh, sometimes they do sell even more than the Bloodstone Warped Hides. So that's basically how the farm goes. You're killing centaurs, you're opening strong boxes on the map that I showed you earlier on the little guide that has the lines marked of how the route goes. You'll also see little circles marked on the map with a box in the middle. That's where the strong boxes are. There are a lot of strong boxes in the area. Make sure you collect all of them. I do think these are on a daily reset. I have not done the farm enough to actually know how many times you can open these, but I'm pretty sure they're on a daily reset, just like all the other nodes that we had in Ember Bay. If you wanted to farm the uh, the petrified wood stumps, those are on a daily reset. I'm pretty sure these strong boxes are also on a daily reset. However, I do think you can do it across characters. Uh, I have not tried it. Like I said, I've only, I've only done this farm maybe three or four times, and I wanted to get this video out as quickly as possible so you can be aware of it and take advantage of these Bloodstone Warped Hides to actually salvage them and make some profit. Now, on average, I have made between 8 to 10 gold an hour with this method. Is it as good as Arc Basin? Far from it. Arc Basin, you can make 30, 40 gold very easily on one run. But this method of farming will probably only net you about 8 to 10 gold an hour. At least those were my results. So it's a fair amount of gold. It's a fairly good way to make gold. Is it better than some other methods? You'll probably still make more money by doing fractals, especially the level 40 fractal farm. You might still make money more than that. You probably will make more money than that. You might still make more money doing the silver waste chest farming. But if you are interested in getting leather, and this is probably the best thing to do for leather, if you need leather, do this method and salvage the leather hot and salvage the Bloodstone Warped Hides because you can get some high tier leathers that are very expensive and you can get them for a lot cheaper. And you can get a ton of these Bloodstone Warped Hides. I've gotten close to 100 Bloodstone Warped Hides in 30 minutes or so. So you can get close to 200, if not 200 Bloodstone Warped Hides in one hour of just collecting strong boxes and farming these centaurs. Uh, minus maybe 20 or so if you already collected the strong boxes. You might make like 150 or so if you've already collected the strong boxes in an hour. But if you happen to do the cross characters and you're able to find them across characters, the strong boxes, you can very well make 200 easy from these an hour. And lots of gold can be made from this. So the big question is, has this helped the leather market? Well, if we take a look at the graphs here, for one, it has helped the hardened leather sections. Hardened leather sections have decreased in price, which is a good thing. They're slowly rising again, but hopefully they won't rise too much. But you can see they have dropped. There has been more supply in them. So for hardened leather sections, it's done a fairly okay job. But for all the other pieces of leather, the price hasn't really changed that much. Now for thick leather sections, the price has decreased a little bit as well, but once again, it's slowly rising a little bit again. So I can really only say that this has helped the thick leather sections and it has, and it has, and it has helped the hardened leather sections. All the other pieces of leather have pretty much stayed the same. Now, I don't know if it's because people aren't aware about this farm. Not enough people are doing it. People don't know how to do it. And hopefully with this video made, people will start doing it and we'll see leather prices drop. But this was supposed to fix the leather market. According to Arenanet, this was the idea to fix the leather market and to help lower the price. Are people still holding on to the leather and not willing to sell them? I'm not really sure. Um, but... We can see hardened leather and thick leather has dropped in price. The other ones have not. So whether this has been a successful uh, solution for helping the leather market, I can't really say. If you have a better opinion than mine and you're more aware about this market than I am, please leave your comments down in the comment section below. I'd love to uh, see some of your comments and have a conversation of whether this is helping the leather market, whether it's not, whether it could help. I would definitely recommend 
keeping an eye on these charts in the next few days because as this video gets released a lot of people are probably going to do it because you can't make some gold off of it and if you don't need leather you're going to sell it if you need leather this is a great way to get leather who knows maybe people aren't selling the leather because they're able to get it now from this method and they're able to actually get their own leather not from buying it but from farming it this is a great way to farm for leather so hopefully you enjoyed the video hopefully you learned something hopefully you found this helpful if you did go ahead and leave a like and uh, like I said, there are other ways to make better gold than this, so I'm fully aware about that. But this is another method to make some gold, and if you want some variety in your gold making ways, this is a great one to look at because it is new. It is pretty fun killing a bunch of centaurs. There are a lot of centaurs around you, and killing them all at once with a group of people just running through and AOEing everybody is a lot of fun. This is a fun method. And uh, if you have any other tips or tricks or feedback on this method, then go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. We're all here to learn. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and subscribe. Plenty of other gold guides on the channel. Plenty of other Guild Wars 2 videos on the channel as well. And I believe the next video we're going to be doing is the Lake Doric map. And then we're going to summarize the story, do a little recap of the Hell of the Snake story. Those two videos, I'm not sure when they're going to come out because I still have to finish the story. And I still need to explore Lake Doric a bit more before I can give you a formal video with as much information as possible. So bear with me as I gather the information and I produce the next two videos. So that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. As always, if you want to check out the vlogging channel, the tutorials channel, advice channel, music channel, links are in the description as well as on the end screen. And if you want to donate a dollar to my Patreon page, you can do so as well. Click the card on the top right corner of the screen and it will bring you to the page. And I think that pretty much covers it. This is Geosman. I'm smart. And we'll be back soon, you think. Don't go anywhere.